Good morning. I found the red ants. You want to see the red ants? We finally got them. But there's a lot more over here. And then I think this must be their entry point to the underworld. This is the subway station is down there underground. And it's funny, there were two big sets of black ants on the way here and they were all desolate. There wasn't a single ant moving where I saw hundreds yesterday. Oops, the phone is rotating, sorry. Don't lose your balance. Wow, there's the sunrise. And let's go down and check out these ants a little bit again. The phone started to rotate there. I didn't want to give you a somersault. Let's see if it will stay put this time. So I'm intrigued about these red ants. They don't seem to be moving as quickly as the black ants. But oh, there you have them. So they do exist. Look at this beautiful sunrise. People, there was a young lad and he had a little bag on his back walking along at the lake here at the Sea of Galilee, Lake Tiberius. Lake Genezareth, these are the different names for the same place, depending on different translations and points of view. You have Lake Le Mans and Lake Geneva, it's the same lake in Switzerland. And this became Lake Tiberius after Tiberius was built and made capital of Galilee. We can't see Tiberius right now, it's just hiding there behind the hill. And there was a little boy walking along here one day and he found himself in the middle of a lot of people and he was carrying a little bag. And his little bag, he had five loaves and two fish. And then he was in the middle of a big crowd. And he must be going to hear Jesus because he was close to the disciples when Jesus asked the question, well, how are we going to feed these people? And Philip says, we'd need 200 day wages. That's like most of a year's salary and it wouldn't even be enough to give a little bit to everybody. So along they kept going on their path, you know, and this huge crowd of people moved Jesus' heart to compassion. And one of the disciples said to Jesus, well, there's a little boy here with five loaves and two fish. Did he have plans for those loaves and fish? How were his plans? Were they for his family? Or he just had the idea to put them in his bag anyway, or maybe he was going to share with somebody. Whatever. We don't know. That's not explained. A lot of things in life aren't explained, but they just happen. 
And sure enough, he let Jesus have the loaves and the, and the fish. And we know the rest of the story. The feeding of so many. We don't know the boy's name. It's not too difficult to imagine that he became a disciple or he was already a disciple. Jesus could have done the miracle without his loaves and fish. But he wanted to use his loaves and fish. That wasn't the boy's decision. The boy was just generous. And he parted with what he had to let Jesus fulfill the big plan. It's also interesting to read this passage in the light of the first reading from the second book of Kings, where we see Elisha with 20 barley loaves feeding 100 people. This correlation and points out then to that continual growth and revelation and God's goodness coming closer. And the psalm is so powerful because this spirit is already there in many psalms actually. The Lord feeds us and he answers all our needs. What a, what a powerful encouragement. The Lord feeds us and answers all our needs. And it could be somebody surprisingly, uh, unexpectedly, is the one providing that little bit that's enough for God to answer our needs. Could be you. You've, you never know. I think in heaven we're going to have so many surprises. It would just be marvelous. So many surprises. Maybe it's something as insignificant and as withered as this old thistle here. Some little thing in our lives. Maybe just a little thing we have. Some little fruit and somebody's passing by and we share it. I actually know for a long time a story of a lady in rural Ireland who was leaving her family. She was fed up, frustrated. And she met a farmer. And he said to her, he realized what was going on because she was a little disturbed. I mean, significantly disturbed probably. And he said, oh, you know, the wife, that means his wife. That's the way you say it in Ireland, the farmers, you know. The wife, the wife was looking forward to meeting you. Why don't you go in and say hello to her? And sure, she went into the wife. It was probably a few hundred yards away or a half a mile away or wherever, wherever she met the farmer. And she went into the wife and she said to the wife, ah, oh, Jack, you know, whatever his name was, said to you, to, you were looking for me, you wanted to see me. But she could tell in her eyes that the lady was a little troubled. So she said, sure, I'm waiting for you. Would you like a cup of tea? I'm just about to make it. And in that conversation with that cup of tea, the woman was completely renewed in her courage. I actually happened to know that family as a child and heard the story much later and just marvel at how that little instinct of that farmer and the way his wife captured the message, you know, and she knew how to help and to give a word of encouragement. Imagine living like that. The little boy with his five loaves and his two fish and you with your cup of tea, with your cup of coffee, with a bit of fruit, 
letting somebody ahead of you on the road that's very frustrated, nervous, shouting, angry. Let them ahead. I'll be three minutes later because I won't make the traffic light. Now they got the opportunity. And send them along with a little prayer because Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and blessed them and blessed the Father for the gifts just like is done here in biblical tradition at every meal lifting up the eyes and saying thank you blessed are you Lord God of all creation through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life The Lord feeds us and answers all our needs. So maybe you're on one side of the line, you have a lot of needs. Or maybe right now you're pretty blessed and you can ponder who needs me. And there are people actually who are suffering a lot and they're thinking who needs me. And if you look at the letter today of the Ephesians, the text, it's very short. It's there in the link. And the fellow's in prison. And he's given so much encouragement from the middle of prison. It's just amazing to be a prisoner and to be dishing out encouragement and enthusiasm for life. What a way to live. You know, that's like good news coming out of a prison. It's amazing, isn't it? So there are two boats now with some people. And today we have a very special celebration. It's actually because of tomorrow, but it's being done today because people have the opportunity to come together in church on Sunday. So it's the day of grandparents. The day of grandparents and elderly, because also there are many colleagues of grandparents, many companions who don't have children, don't have grandchildren. So I was very happy that that word elderly was attached to this celebration. The concrete calendar reason is there's um, an ancient tradition, liturgical tradition to honor the parents of Mary, who would then be the grandparents of Jesus. Because if we're not shocked that God became flesh and dwelt among us, born of a woman, as the letter to the Galatians say, well, that woman didn't come out of thin air, she didn't come from an email. She had parents herself, and if she was young, maybe they were still alive. Jesus had grandparents. And so the church has grown. There's a, a lady from Ireland, actually, who started this organization years ago, and little by little it's spreading around, it's becoming popular. And in our society today, many times the elderly are left abandoned. They're left alone, they're not visited. I knew one family in Germany and their children, grandchildren lived 20 miles away. And this was back in the early 90s when I started in Germany. I started in 89 in Germany. And I got to know this family. They came to visit and they told me that their son and daughter-in-law and the children come to visit them every year on the day after Christmas for one hour and then they drive way back to their home 20 miles away and they never see them for the whole year i didn't probe more at that moment i didn't want to i just felt the pain and and they knew that they could sense that compassion and prayer 
So maybe today think of your grandparents or if you're a grandparent, find an excuse to call up the grandchild and just to build those bridges. And I included a beautiful text that Pope Francis wrote to the elderly and he said, I write this to you as an elderly person myself. And it's in very much contextualized in the difficulties of our times of the suffering of all the lockdowns where grandparents haven't had a chance to be with their grandchildren. Many times a grandparent has also passed away onto eternal life during this period and people haven't been able to be there for the funeral. Lots of different sufferings and hardships. And the letter is filled with beauty, with spiritual beauty and a great sense of mission. You know, the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish, you could say like, how is this going to feed 20, 40,000 people? How many people were at the miracle? You know, the gospel says 5,000 men. Well, I think there's always more women in religious things usually. And then what about children? And they didn't have, you know, they weren't limited by the United Nations to two-child policy. So they, they probably had lots of children. And if you ask a, 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 five, a boy with five loaves and two fish, you don't want to feed these 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people. How are we going to do that? And you ask, see this grandparent and they're having a hard time walking. Maybe it's difficult for them to even get out of bed. And the big role a grandparent can have, an elderly person can have. Abraham was 80 years of age when God called him and so was Moses. Oh, you know what? I just got beside those red flowers. But I think I'm a few days late, but these are the ones I found in bloom a week ago when the other ones were all gone. They're right here. And there are actually very little left now. So we'll have to hope for next year. Oh yes, there's a little bit here, but there's also the reddish is, is, um, is fading. And there's a little bit over here. But they were a very intense red. Yeah, there we got one. And these are all, um, well, these tiny little flowers inside, like the size of mosquitoes. And you have a bunch here as well. There's still some of the red here left. But they were brighter red than that. So we'll hope for better times. Well, at least we saw the red ants and a little bit of these red flowers. And there's one other thing. I also attached the link for the pilgrimage of healing for October, starting at the end of the September. So just check out the link. And there's a lot more information that'll be coming about all of that. So it's just basic information to get into the, the, um, into the list for the pilgrimage, like the two big pilgrims we had uh, already, the one in October last year, and then the one we had during Lent. And uh, hundreds of thousands of people were directly blessed by these pilgrimages. So maybe you want to sign up there. And Kathleen is going to be leading the English pilgrimage part. And she already has done a beautiful video message. I don't think it's in this link that I sent you, but we'll get you that in the next couple of days. And if I don't get it to you, make sure you remind me. So people, have a blessed Sunday. It was just wonderful here being with you. Here in Mount Arbel, look at this. Back in favorite places. This beautiful morning. And for those of you who, who assist at Mass, who would like to connect, uh, we're having Mass this morning in a change schedule for Sunday for our community day. So it'll be at 8.15, live stream in English. 8.15, live stream in English. And that means right now, what time is it? About 6.15? Yeah, 6.30. Wow, 6.30. Wow. So, um, 6.30, 7.30. So in an hour and three quarters, we'll have the Mass. But don't stay up for it because it'll be, it'll be, if you're going to bed now, have a great sleep. And it will be there on, online for you tomorrow when you wake up. So it's a good time probably for all the people in East Asia and Australia. And uh, maybe some early risers in Europe. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators.